is the Ramsey Custom Shop and my name is Gary. On this video, we had a need to cut all of these three quarter inch flat bar pieces into four inch links. While we're working on the project, we just decided to use several different methods to cut it and do some comparisons. So take a look. All right, guys, I'm gonna talk you through this. Um, and this is all fast forwarded and I will be showing you the uh, amount of time each one of these takes at the end. So this is some three quarter inch by four flat bar and I'm just getting this first set, this piece set in place and um, setting the stop block and getting things located. The entire time to get this first one set up was two minutes and 54 seconds. And I'm gonna end up cutting this in two different ways, laying it flat and standing it up vertical. I have found that it actually does better standing up vertical in terms of time but occasionally you know depending on the part it will the blade will want to walk a little bit and it won't get as straight a cut it'll come off without a without a square cut so uh, you see that piece finished up there and now we're going to stand up and cut it vertically so that was two minutes and 54 seconds but that included the stop block setup time this one um took a minute and 45 seconds so i don't really know that it was that much faster because the minute and 45 seconds didn't include the time i spent doing the stop block setup it might have been a little faster and um you know the rate of uh the, the feed rate on this is a variable as well and it's 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 a thing that's kind of hard to repeat you know from from piece to piece because you have a little hydraulic knob that you're controlling and it's just you know how much do you open it up kind of thing so um, but I did just want to show you know the two different ways using the horizontal bandsaw in the first uh, first attempt so after we get that done we're gonna uh, pull the uh, the remaining flat bar out of the uh, bandsaw and come over to the plasma table and um, you know some people might ask well why don't you use a plasma you know or, or plasma cutter or plasma table so you'll see that this one ends up being quite time consuming and um, you know so I'm walking over getting it set up into place here and I'm just using a piece of square plate it's not perfectly square but it's a it's a piece of flat stock that's been cut to square up my piece that I'm putting in there up against it but space it off the you know the outer edge of the table so you know you need to, to get a square cut on the end you got to have the piece in there square and then um, of course, I don't usually keep 85 amp tips in the machine, and this requires 85 amps. So we're gonna have to change the tip out. But first, we're gonna get a measurement here on on four inches because that's what we got to cut off of it. And then we'll uh, we'll jog the gantry over and and go ahead and uh, get the tip swapped out. Going over, getting the tip. And I've got this fast forwarded, but this is a <clears throat> this is a lengthy process. You can see this was from the time I went and grabbed the piece and put it on the table to actually finishing the cut was four minutes and 52 seconds. So, you know, clearly this is not an efficient way to use it. It works, you know, and you'll see on the cut edge, it's it's the worst of all the of all the finishes on the on the cut as well. So here we go. We got it lined up and just gonna make the cut. I think it took about 30, a little over 30 seconds to actually make the cut across there. Um, so it was all the setup time that was the time consuming part. And uh, when we get done, you know, I'm gonna show you uh, the squareness of, of all of these and you know, how this, how this actually worked out from a squareness point of view. We'll compare uh, accuracy as well. So, I mean, for a plasma, it left a pretty decent edge, but overall, compared to a saw cut, definitely not. So, from here, we're going to grab the piece off the table and make our way over to um, one of the welding tables and clamp it into place and use the Milwaukee Porta Band. So, I started the time, you know, on this next procedure there when I was when I was picking up the piece. So, you see, we got 
our Milwaukee, I said Portaban, I meant, meant to say Milwaukee circular saw with the metal cutting blade in it. And you'll see that I have to move the clamps here in a second. I didn't have room to draw my straight edge. Normally, you know, in the other things, I didn't need to draw a straight edge, but because I'm gonna be following this, I needed to, to actually draw that. Use that as a guide. See me using that Silver Streak pencil there. That works really well on uh, uh, any any kind of surface, you know, whether it's wet or dry. You know, if you tried to use a Sharpie on that, it may or may not cut well. And this is my second time using this saw, and uh, I sort of got it bound up here. You'll you'll see it jog, and then it then it cuts off. But that that took a minute and uh, and 45 seconds to do. So now we're going to unclamp it. We're going to take it over to the vertical band saw. And we got to do the same thing here. We've got to get it measured and get it set up to cut. Again, I needed to draw a line all the way across because I'm using that as a guide. This thing, you know, you need a lot of force to, to push something like this through. And the bad thing about using a lot of force on something like this is if you slip, you know, it's it's going to be a bad day for you. So I try to balance that. I mean, I could have pushed it harder. And then as I get up close, I always use another push block to push right in the center, you know. And uh, so um, you, you saw that and the time that took um, there. So then this was ended up being the fastest way. Um, and this is using the, the Milwaukee, I'm sorry, the DeWalt uh, metal cutting chop saw. And... Um, So we're just drawing a line and getting it measured up, you know, and just just lining it up just outside the line. And then the key thing on this thing is to make sure the, the stock is is flat on the deck of the base. If you le let it get tipped up a little bit, uh, you'll end up with a not square cut. And it's pretty easy to do that, actually. So this thing just really powers through the thick, the thick metal. I mean, it just makes its way through there really nicely. So we'll finish this up and, and take a look at, a, at all of them together on the uh, table over here. All right, we're going to zoom in here and take a look at the different cuts and um, just kind of inspect them a little bit. This was the, um, this was the horizontal bandsaw cut, and I've not deburred any of these. These are just like they, they came off of the, each of the saws. Um, and you can see the, the bandsaw left just a very small burr there. Um, that usually just come off on its own, even no burr on the back side where it cut through. Um, so this this was the one that we stood upright in the saw. Took a minute and 45 seconds. Again, I don't know if that was a great comparison on that, but let's just check check it with a square um, here. Hopefully that's showing up. And that's that's actually really, I mean, it's rocking just a tiny amount, and there could be a, a small little raised uh, area there. Um, and that's not rocking at all so for what we're doing on this this is really really good you know and short of putting this in the mill and running an indicator across it um, I'm just thinking that that uh, you know just put a square on it and check it out the other thing is how do we do on our measuring you know to get the uh, get the width we're shooting for four inches and again for what we're working on it doesn't have to be you know, it doesn't have to be exact. That one was 3993, so a little under there, seven thousandths under. This was the horizontal bandsaw, but with the piece vertical. This is the horizontal bandsaw uh, laying flat, and you see the three minutes, 52 seconds. Um, and again, it's really square. Look at it this way. square that way as well and we'll just check it uh, here I'm gonna just check this one end to end and see so this one and look at that well 4000 right on the dot so I don't know how we got seven thousandths under um, 
because we used a stock block, but there could have been a burr or you know something on it. So a little bit shorter on this side, so that's probably the difference. Four thousandths there. So I may need to work on that saw and try to square it up a little bit, but still, that's that's pretty good overall. Um, this is just in random order. So the next one up is going to be the DeWalt um, chop saw. And it was the fastest, a minute and 25 seconds. And uh, first of all, let's take a look. I think I might have measured this under a little bit. Yeah. When I measured it and, and got it in there, I didn't didn't quite allow for it to, to take the line. So undercut that one a little bit. Um, let's just check the squareness. And this is typically what I see on that saw. Um, you can see that that, that was not uh, square. Let's look at this edge. Now this edge uh, was came from the other part of the vertical uh, bandsaw, so it's going to be um, it's going to not be even because I didn't I didn't cut it even. Uh, here's the other piece that it actually uh, fits up on that goes on there like that, and you can see I didn't cut that very very squarely, but um, definitely noticed. Um, I'm pretty sure you can see that how out of square that is and um, you know again it could be how I set it up in there didn't quite get it squared into the base but I find more often than not, than not that I come out of that saw without you know with with edges that are not exactly square um, and an abrasive saw chop saw it'll be really unsquare but um, it does leave a nice finish and uh, really no burr on it at all Here's the plasma. You can see the edge. I, I did an edge start on it and it you know left a kind of a nasty thing there. Let's take a look at the squareness. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell the squareness because it's got a raised up edge there where it finished. But it looks like if you look at the gap, it's consistent all the way down, which would kind of indicate that it's that it's pretty square. And uh, let's see how I did just trying to get that to be four inches there just eyeballing it in there you can see that a little over four inches so you know 17 thousandths over not really that bad the edge is not not great um a little bit of a dross on the back not terrible for for a plasma so all in all you know for the plasma not bad but again four minutes and 50 seconds because of the setup the vertical band saw two minutes 54 seconds and i know it's not going to be square because it was relying on me to be able to push it through by hand and you can see it's kind of wavy through there. Let's see what, what this looks like. A little over 50 thousandths over, 48 thousandths over there. So yeah, not, not great on that. Uh, definitely slow and not accurate. Um, now, my vertical bandsaw has a three quarter inch wide blade on it. If I had a wider blade in it, I could get a straighter cut easier. It wants to kind of wander through there, which helps you if you're trying to cut curves, you know, or, or shapes out of out of something, but doesn't help you if you're trying to use it for, for square. Um, this one, I overcut the line. This is the circular, Milwaukee circular saw. This one actually, you know, is kind of comparable to the DeWalt saw. I mean, it's basically the same thing. You're just doing it freehand. A uh, minute and 53 seconds, so pretty good on that. It really powers right through there. Um, it's not square, you know, again, because I was doing it by hand and by eye. Let's look at it this way. Not not off a lot, but just kind of wavy down through there. And I overcut it. Yeah, so... Three sixteenths over or so. Eighth inch, three sixteenths, something in that range. All right, guys. So it looks like, from an accuracy standpoint, the horizontal bandsaw definitely is is the is the most true and square. And from a speed standpoint, it's going to be the Dewalt chop saw. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. Check out the center of the screen. You'll see a playlist with several other comparison videos, whether it be MIG versus TIG, or comparing two different types of welders to all sorts of comparisons that we've done in the past. So. Check it out. See if you like any of those videos. Thank you.